today is Ben Beek. His research focuses on developing improved test methods for measuring the mechanical and tribological properties of thin films and coatings. And we'll just quickly unmute Ben and give him control of the screens. Ben, you've got control. Okay, thank you, Alison. Okay, welcome everybody. In this final segment of the webinar, I'm going to switch the focus to nano and micro tribological test techniques. Now, these are very complementary to the indentation methods you've heard, heard about from Adrian and Mike, and they're valuable additional tools in the optimization of the performance of hardware resistant coatings for demanding applications such as high speed machining. So I'm going to focus on three sort of application areas. Initially, I'll talk a little bit about high temperature nano impact testing and correlation with uh, uh, performance of coated uh, cutting tools. Then I'll move on to look at uh, highly loaded high temperature micro scratch and wear tests up to 600 degrees. And then I'll finish off with something a little bit different where we're looking at uh, much lower load now. And here we're looking at the evolution of friction in sliding contacts at right up to 750 degrees Celsius. So recent trends in high-speed machining are, toward, are twofold. They're to, uh, essentially for environmental reasons to, to cut dry and for productivity reasons to, to cut at increasingly higher speeds. So these, these two things taken together have the effect of increasing the severity of the cutting conditions rather dramatically. So as an example here shown from Mitsubishi shown that over a 15-year period there's effectively a tenfold increase in cutting speed. So as Adrian said, this puts a lot of uh, demands on the performance of the coatings and people typically will just optimize for the hot hardness. And while that is a useful thing to do, as you saw earlier, there's nevertheless not, it's not the only factor that affects tool life, as hopefully we'll be able to show you. So as we increase the cutting speed, essentially the uh, frictional heating gets more and more, so the heat not only goes into the chip, here, but it also goes into the body of the tool, and there's a maximum in temperature here on the flank face of the, of the cutting tool, and there, this is typically where you get the most wear, so cutting tool life is essentially uh, defined by where this cutting, where this flank wear increases beyond 300 microns. So, the, the coatings essentially are to try to protect the carbide substrate from this, ex, um, this soft, thermal softening from friction. So that it's important the coatings retain their integrity and don't wear. So I mentioned the hot hardness is important. You mentioned plasticity and impact fracture resistance are also important. And in addition to the indent properties you get directly from the indentation test that you can do at high temperature, you can also get some useful complementary information from the associated nano and micro tribological tests. So one of the advantages we have with the nano test system is that because it's a multifunctional instrument, it allows us not simply to do our nano indentation tests at room temperature in a quasi-static region here, but not only to increase the temperature, but also to increase the strain rate. And we do that with our nano impact te technique, which is essentially a repetitive high strain rate indentation method which for single impacts gives you dynamic hardness information and with repetitive impacts allows you to understand the fatigue fracture behavior of your different materials that you're testing. So the combination of these two things allows you really to expand from this little rather small test window of characterization towards a weight, a much larger map essentially of properties which you can use to optimize materials and simulate the uh, contact conditions, the mechanical contact conditions much more closely. So this slide shows you uh, a graph here of the evolution of impact damage at two different temperatures on a titanium aluminium nitride coating. And you can immediately see that the performance is quite a strong function of temperature. So at, uh, the at room temperature, essentially this coating behaves in a very brittle way. There's a lot of uh, fra continued fracturing with this repetitive impact, whereas at, at the higher temperature it's much more resistant to this fracturing and there's a, there's a little chip in this example here, but it's 
his performance is essentially improved as far as fracture resistance goes. And you can see some statistics in this table here. And you can also compare uh, different coatings. If we in increase the aluminium fraction in this material from 0.5 here to, uh, sorry, 0.5 titanium down to 0.3 and this to 0.67, then actually that gives the coating uh, slightly greater plasticity and this gives it an improved fracture resistance at high temperature. And this is directly related to its uh, performance in interrupted cutting tests such as those in uh, face and end mill milling of hardened steels. So this is just an example here, an end milling test on the structural steel. So this is uh, the coating that uh, fractures more here and you can see in the in the impact test and you can see in the cutting test that it's, uh, its wear is much greater and essentially its tool life is shorter. This one here with the higher aluminium fraction has a much more gradual wear and then its cutting tool life is a little bit longer. So in a, a tribological test essentially at high speed, although you think you're working at room temperature, you might in fact be performing a, a high temperature test where you don't really know what the effect of the frictional uh, heating due to the speed is. So a complementary approach is essentially to control the tribological test much more tightly. So you can do that by sliding and scratching at much lower speed. You can utilize the high lateral stiffness in the instrument uh, together with its uh, thermal control. And this allows us essentially to produce highly defined experiments that allow us to look at uh, the evolution of friction and wear. So the case studies that follow involve different sort of cutting tool coatings deposited on cemented carbide. We'll look at uh, ramped or progressive load scratch tests up to 500 degrees and repetitive constant load scratch tests at uh, 2 newtons force. And for these sort of tests we typically use a 25 micron spheroconical diamond. So this slide shows the three scan tests of uh, the performance of two different coatings at 500 degrees. So the three scan scratch test is essentially a expanded scratch test where the initial scan is simply a topographic profile along the surface of the material to get the roughness. Then we have a ramped scratch after some distance here, the load's applied here. And then the residual scan again, the load is reduced to a minimal contact load. And this allows us to separate out the elastic deformation from the plastic and the fracture information here. So we can immediately see when we compare these two different materials that their, be their behavior is very different. And by utilizing this test technique as well, it allows us to, to pin out these different uh, failure locations here. So we can see the, uh, the coating buckling up in front of the indenter here and there's a failure here, but there's also a lower load, there's a failure behind the moving probe due to a tensile stress. Which is and um, you can see if you can compare this titanium aluminium nitride that these these um, critical loads seem to be at slightly lower, slightly lower uh, forces. And indeed, if we look at the statistics there, we can sort of pin that out. Sorry. And um, you can see here that this aluminium chromium nitride has the higher critical load at high temperature. And this correlates quite nicely with its uh, improved uh, tool life in a range of different interrupted cutting conditions. So if we um, move on now to look at uh, micro wear tests, in this case at 500 degrees on a high aluminium fraction titanium nitride coating, aluminium titanium nitride coating. So these micro wear tests are essentially low pass repetitive micro scratch tests that are unidirectional sliding. And at room temperature here we can see under these highly loaded conditions, the coating doesn't survive more than uh, uh, two cycles. Essentially during the third cycle there's an abrupt change in depth corresponding directly to the coating thickness. There's a delamination that's occurred there and then there's continual wear of the substrate. In contrast as the temperature is increased, here the uh, coating has more plasticity at a higher temperature and there's less driving force for this delamination and essentially getting a much more gradual failure that's occurring over several scans and that's what you really ideally would like for a cutting application. You don't want your coating to 
abruptly delaminate uh, and leading to a large area chipping or something like that. You'd like your coating to, if it's going to wear, you want it to wear away nicely and slowly. So we can also contrast this uh, behavior of this material with its, when we anneal it, in this case we can anneal it uh, for a couple of hours in vacuum at 900 degrees, and that annealing step alters its hardness and its ductility. It produces a harder material. You can see just by looking at these room temperature data here that annealing this coating has reduced its critical load. So it's not always beneficial to focus on hardness. And indeed, as the test temperature increases, you're getting an actual increase in critical load because this, uh, the, these materials essentially are softening out. So this uh, here as well, you're showing this enhanced ductility uh, in this one the, without the annealing step here. So this is particularly important in interrupted cutting of steels. So there's an example uh, from a, a cutting tool, a tool life test. If we could just compare the as deposited to aluminum titanium nitride, this is the wear here. If we contrast it now with the coating after we've annealed it at 900 degrees, we'll see that the flank wear is much greater essentially. So it's almost straight away you're getting, you haven't got this uh, running in period here, you're getting a much more severe wear quite quickly. So it's quite, again, it's a good, a good example of where the performance in the high temperature micro scratch test correlates very nicely with the cutting tool life in the application. So to finish off, talk a little bit about friction. So all the tests so far, we've had a constant temperature. One other thing you can do is you can actually ramp the temperature while you're sliding, and this allows you to look at um, phase transformation behavior. So in this particular study from Northwestern University, they were looking at a range of different uh, silver bismuth alloys. And between uh, room temperature and about 250 degrees or so, they got a gradual increase in friction due to uh, an increased plowing because the, the, the alloy was softening as, as the temperature increased. But in some of, the, some of the alloy compositions that they studied, they noticed as they took the temperature a little bit higher, they noticed an abrupt drop in friction down to very low values, and this is due to the uh, formation of a, a liquid um, lubricious uh, bismuth rich phase, essentially. So you're getting a very nice way you can pin out these um, transition temperatures. So if we want to take the test temperature a bit higher, we can do that as well. So now we've gone right up to 750 degrees, and we combine a large radius probe with a very small uh, contact load, and this allows us essentially to work at very low uh, nominal contact pressure, certainly well under a megapascal. And then we can start to look at um, effects of stiction and stick slip, and also uh, tribo oxidation and the stability of tribofilms, really at a quite small scale. So it's, a, it's an interesting new test technique that's just been developed. So this is an example uh, from uh, a high temperature sliding test on a max phase a layered ternary car um, chrome carbide, aluminum carbide film here. And this particular material shows some stiction events at the beginning. So before true sliding occurs at 750, you have to overcome quite a large setting friction here. So this sort of thing is very useful in fundamental studies of friction. If we look now at a complex uh, multi multi-component nitride film here. This is probably more typical behavior. At room temperature, we're getting a very lo uh, pretty low friction coefficient around 0.1. By 400 degrees Celsius, this is increased by, uh, increased, uh, by about 300% to about 0.3. But then when we go up yet further to 750 degrees, now we're seeing actually a drop in friction. And you can see it's a much more jaggedy trace. So something's, something's gone on between here and here. So what is, what is happening in this situation? Well, it's essentially it's due to roughness. There was a big increase in roughness as the test temperature increased between 400 and 750. This is because the coatings are unstable in air uh, for, uh, above 400. For example, titanium nitride has an oxidation onset temperature around 550. And these, these coatings here are fairly similar. If you put aluminium in here, you will actually improve that oxidation onset, but these, these other materials were less successful at doing that. And the coat, this coating instability leads to a, a loose um, 
film of lubricious uh, rutile and other sort of related compounds that forms. And essentially this has the effect of lowering the contact area and lowering the observed friction. So quite a quick presentation to finish off with. I hope hopefully myself and Adrian and Mike have given you a good overview of the different range of this different test capability that we can achieve right from room temperature right up to 750 degrees Celsius. And these tests are possible because of the uh, design of the instrument, its uh, patented thermal uh, management approach, the environmental control we do, the indenter choice. And we can do, as well as normal indentation, we can also do micro indentation, micro and nano scratch, impact testing, creep testing, and the cantilever bending, SVM imaging, and micro pillar compression test that Adrian described. So if you'd like further information, as, as uh, my other presenters have said, please email in after the uh, webinar is finished. Or if you can even if you can join us on our next uh, advanced nanomechanics workshop, that takes place in Malta in October. So thank you for your time.